morning, Healing Through Movement followers. It's me, Shiloh Fayad, transformational life coach and entrepreneur and teacher. I wear many hats and I'm also a mom. It's so great to have you here today, this morning, Thursday, 9.30. Thank you for joining us for Essential Oils 101. What? How? Why? We're going to be covering all the things about essential oils today. Um, I know that there is so much information out there right now about essential oils. I've been using them personally myself for four years, so I feel like I'll be able to talk about them relatively well. Um, yeah, and I also noticed there's been quite a bit of controversy around essential oils too, so we'll go over a little bit of that as well. So thank you for joining us. Um, I would love to find out where you're watching from. That's something I forgot to ask last week. I always find it to be really fun and exciting to see where everybody's watching from. Um, also, if you really like this video, please share it far and wide. Send us some hearts. I always tell everybody every week that I love the hearts. Look at that. You can see it really nicely on my dress, kind of. I love the hearts. I love the thumbs up. So just send those across because they encourage me while I'm talking to you because for all I know, I'm talking into a void. I love having interaction, comments, questions, anything. Just bring it on in the comments. And yeah, so let's get started. So again, the topic is Essential Oils 101, what, how, and why. And this is a great topic right now because there seems to be essential oils everywhere. Even Walmart is carrying its own line of essential oils now. Um, and so it's great to have some information that you know that you can rely on about what they are, you know, how they work, if they're even even useful, and, you know, why bother using them. So, great. You're, it's great. I'm happy you're here. I'm getting a little excited here. I, I don't know why. Maybe because I'm sitting in a different spot. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but I'm not sitting in my chair today. Maybe it's throwing me off a bit. I don't know. So, let's start off with um, how many people here have used an essential oil? Put an emoji down in the comments if you've actually used an essential oil in your life. I started dabbling in essential oils back in the 90s. I felt a little overwhelmed, so I sort of abandoned it until recently. So if you've, if you've used an essential oil in your life, just send an emoji down there. And if you're curious about any particular essential oil or how effective they are, please write it down. Thanks, Karen. I love the thumbs up. You've used an essential oil. So great. Um, and if just people can let us know where they're watching from, that would be great too. Uh, so the... The most important things that I think that you can know about an essential oil or essential oils in general is what are they exactly? This is important to know so that you can really understand, you know, how useful they are or if they can complement you in your health and wellness lifestyle. So an essential oil is really like um, it's the aromatic oil obtained through the distill distillation process of a plant. And so in the distillation process, they will either use the leaves, the flowers, the stems, or the root of the plant to distill this essential oil. Now, essential oils have a really, hello, Karen. Oh, look, you're from Abu Dhabi. Great. Essential oils have a really important function in the plant. It's, they're sort of like the essence of the plant, and they protect the plant. They're a powerful protector. They protect the plant from fungi, from insects, from predators, from, um, I think there was bacteria as well in my notes. So essential, yes, look at that. Somebody put across a, a like wow face because yes, I did not know this about essential oils. It's almost like the life essence or the blood of the plant. So when we distill essential oils out of the plant, this essence out of the plant, what we're left with is a liquid. I mean, the, the essential oil process actually separates the oil from sort of like a hydrosol. There's like a water that comes on top, but we'll talk about that some other time. But what you're left with is a really concentrated, volatile um, substance, okay? So this essential oil is actually made up of chemical compounds. Now, when people hear the words chemical, they're like, oh my God, chemicals aren't good for you. People, everything, I don't know everything, maybe that's a generalized statement, but things in life are made up of chemicals. Like there are good chemicals, there are bad chemicals, there are chemicals everywhere. Hey, hello, Cindy, what repels mosquitoes? Well, we can get to that. So these chemical compounds, and they're things such as esters, terpenes, sesquiterpenes, monoterpenes, I think that's, yeah, monoterpenes, they each have specific functions. So these chemical compounds actually affect your health and wellness in a positive way. So for each chemical compound, um, they all have a specific attribute. Now, uh, I actually kept my notes up here so I could tell you a little bit of the specific attributes so you kind of get an understanding of how it works. So terpenes in general, they inhibit toxin accumulation 
and discharge, discharge them from the liver or kidneys. So, you know, um, you can find out what the chemical compounds are of each essential oil by doing your own research, or you can find a company that's already done that for you and can make recommendations. There's books that have made recommendations of which oils are appropriate for what. Esters are antifungal. They have a calming effect, an anti-inflammatory effect, an antibacterial, antiviral effect. So um, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea. Some of the components, oxides are an expectorant, an antiseptic, an anesthetic. So um, those are the important essential components in essential oils that will help you. So that's how they work. They actually contain chemical compounds that are, so, that are going to affect you in a particular way. So not all of them are the same. Not all of them are the same. And another really important thing to know about essential oils is that not everybody will react to them the same. Okay? So it's much like when you're taking <clears throat> excuse me, prescription medication, you know, you might have to have a different um, a, a different medication than maybe your friend or your cousin. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and some medications won't work for one person, but they'll work for another or different dosages. It's the same thing with an essential oil. If you try one and it's not working right away, it's really important to try another one. The other important thing to know about how essential oils work is that essential oils are indeed medicine. Okay? You don't want to chug them. You don't want to disrespect them and use them all over the place or, or take them all the time without any sort of understanding of their, um, their use or their effects. It's really important to understand that you need to take them with common sense and some understanding of how to use them, okay? So I've seen a lot in the paper and in the news and on Facebook about, oh, essential oils did this to my cat, essential oils did this to a kid. You know what? People need to educate themselves before they start ingesting or using things in their houses or in their lives without really taking the proper precautions, okay? So I'm here to help you through that process. We're gonna do three live videos, specifically around essential oils, to help get you, um, give you some more understanding and to know which ones are good for what and maybe even help you choose where to purchase your essential oils because there is a lot of them out there and they aren't all the same. Um, so the one interesting thing I learned, which I thought I would share with you, um, is that essential oils are made up of minute molecules. And these minute molecules get absorbed really quickly into your skin. So within seconds, it will enter your bloodstream. So that's another reason why you have to be really careful about what you're taking in. In the distillation process, you know, there can be companies that use certain chemicals or things that might not be okay for you. And if you can't really readily ingest an essential, you probably don't want to apply it to your skin. Just, just, just saying. So, for example, an oil like lavender. Now, we hear a lot about lavender. Lavenders, you know, essential oils in general have been around for thousands of years, as I'm sure you know. Baby Jesus, little old baby Jesus, got myrrh and frankincense on his birthday, along with gold. So, essential oils have been around for a very long time and have been used for physical healing, spiritual, and emotional components. So, lavender oil itself, you know, just to give you an idea of how it works, has 40% linalool acetate. Okay, and this is an ester. And the properties of linalool acetate make it that lavender oil is really good for sleeplessness or restlessness or anxiety. So um, those are the chemical components, chemical compounds that actually have a positive benefit to that. And lavender essential oil contains those chemical components. So that's how essential oil works. I see Robert, adrenal fatigue. Yes, long adrenal fatigue. I need help with that. Robert, I heard some really great stuff about celery juice. Some really great stuff about celery juice, but I'll talk to you a little bit about that. We have, um, I know of essential oil blend that's called endo, uh, I can't, something to do with it. So it, it works with your endo, endocrine system, and so your adrenals are part of that. Um, uh, used lavender essential oil on my pillow and had the best sleep ever. Yes, I have a great testimonial around lavender with a, from a friend of mine. It was really funny. She bought lavender. Her husband is a doctor at the hospital and did not believe in essential oils whatsoever, but he had a lot of trouble sleeping. And she started to diffuse lavender oil in their bedroom, and he began to have a great sleep. And at first he wouldn't admit it, but now he's at the point where he puts lavender in, in the diffuser himself. So that was kind of cool. Very dry skin. Okay, great. I love all these questions about what to use which oil for. So I'll get to that. I'm just going to give you a little bit more information on 
how they work, and why to use them. Um, so one of the most important thing about essential oils, and this is probably why I was crazy excited at the, at the beginning of this video and now I'm stuttering, is that essential oils affect the limbic system. So the limbic system is a part of your brain that sits on top of your brain stem, and it, it contains the hippocampus, the amygdala, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus, okay? These four components. And sometimes there's some other things people say that are part of the limbic system. People can't, you know, scientists, some of them don't agree, but whatever, these are the four major components. So essential oils actually are one of the few things that are able to pass the blood-brain barrier, okay? They pass the blood-brain barrier and are able to enter the brain in a different way. So the blood, the brain has this barrier um, that prevents sort of bacteria and, and, and things that, it, that aren't healthy for it to enter into it. I have a bunch of notes about that somewhere, but um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to find right now. But anyway, so um, the limbic system in your brain is in charge of your emotions, okay? It's part of the area that regulates your atomic nervous system. So it regulates the fight and flight, and it regulates the rest and digest. All right, so essential oils through inhalation can actually reach the limbic system and affect, positively affect the limbic system. That's why they're so powerful for emotions, um, for emotional healing, for emotional shifting. I don't know if you've ever, even in your own life, have smelled something, maybe not an essential oil, but it's giving you a natural lift, an immediate natural lift. That's the power of of your olfactory system. Your olfactory system has 10,000, is 10,000 times or has 10,000 more power than um, some of your other senses. So it's extremely powerful. And in 15 minutes, I can't really go into all the details of this, this information. You can Google it for yourself and maybe we have articles about it or I could write an article about it. But just know that essential oils are able to affect your limbic system in a way other things cannot. The limbic system controls rest and digest, fight or flight. And you can positively impact your limbic system, which is in charge of your emotions, by inhaling essential oils. And the reason why you would use this is that it's because it's one of the few things on the planet that can have a, an immediate effect. Okay, so now we only have a few minutes left and I wanna to get to some of these questions. So, um, Let's go back in the, let's, what else did I, I had some other stuff to say, but you know what? I'm going to deal with these questions here really quick. Um, you appeared on my screen out of nowhere. How did this happen? Kelly, I don't know, but I hope you're watching because it's a great thing. I appeared on your screen out of nowhere. Um, hello, Cindy from Texas. What repels mosquitoes? So what repels mosquitoes? Now you have to be careful with essential oils in terms of mosquitoes because some of them repel mosquitoes and some of them attract mosquitoes, right? So you have to be really careful. Now, in terms of repelling mosquitoes, um, I'm just gonna see which ones I had the most success with because I know I've used a combination of oils for repelling mosquitoes. And I do think that it involves um, lemon eucalyptus is one of the ingredients. Um, excuse me, uh, let's see here. Uh, I have a friend of mine who actually made uh, something and I don't remember all of the ingredients. So, okay, here we go. I'll just tell you the ones that I've used. Citronella. So you can get a citronella oil. That will work just like you burn citronella. You can apply that. One thing you need to be careful with um, in general with any sort of citrus oil, and I'm not sure if citronella falls under that because I don't know all the citruses. Maybe citronella has nothing to do with the citrus is that if you apply citrus oil and go out in the sun, it will cause a reaction from the sun. There's like a sensitivity, you could get like almost like a burn. So you have to be very careful with citrus oils and topical application. Now, I'm gonna give you really quickly, before I answer the rest of these questions, the four ways to use essential oils, just so you know. One is topically applying them on your body, okay? So some of the best places to do that is the bottom of your feet. Look at that, I just showed my feet on a live. They look, they look pretty clean, so I think that's okay. Bottom of your feet, because it's the second largest pores in your body. Bottom of your feet is a great place to put it. Behind your ears and also on your wrists. So that's topically. You can apply essential oils topically. Now be careful. Some people are sensitive. You might have to dilute it with a carrier oil. Number two, you can inhale essential oils. And that looks a bit like this. And I, I prepared myself here because 
you could inhale them right out of the bottle, but that's not quite the same as dropping a drop into the palm of your hand, rubbing it together, and taking three breaths. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's clary sage and it's really good for hormones. And I'm needing some of that these days, people. That might be TMI, but we're on a health and wellness page. Might as well be honest. So inhalation, number two. So number one is topically, which is really your foot behind your ears, your wrists. Sorry, I keep showing my arm, but that's not really an ideal spot. Inhalation, you can use it in a diffuser. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen how diffusers are super popular. I can do a review of those at some time. You can use it in a diffuser, and you can also in ingest some essential oils. Oh, I got a heart about about maybe doing a review of diffusers. Well, I would love to do that. Um, you can ingest some essentials. Now, don't go crazy on ingesting essential oils. There's certain companies that have been approved by Health Canada for essential oil digestion or in, uh, like food, they're food safe. And I can let you know who those are next week. I will be having a live that's more specific about those kinds of things. Okay, so those are the four ways. Um, we can go over those again next week. Um, um, let's see. Adrenal fatigue, so nutmeg oil. I know this from personal experience. Nutmeg oil is very good for adrenal fatigue. You can stick it on the inside of your cheeks or you can stick it right on your kidneys. Do you know where your kidneys are, people? Let's show you this. At the back here, your kidneys. At the top of your kidneys is where your adrenals sit. They're, re they're really important, okay? So if you're feeling stressed, fatigued all the time, hair loss, all these other things, get your adrenals checked out. A lot of doctors don't believe in adrenal fatigue, for, for example, but for, I was diagnosed with it by a particular doctor, but it's not as mainstream as it could be. Anyway, not make oil. So that's phenomenal. With buffalo wings, I don't know what that means. Very dry skin. This is another good question. Now, um, lavender. Lavender is very good for dry, very dry skin. If you like um, lavender, the smell of lavender, you can add a little bit of it to your lotion. You can add a little bit of it to a, an oil and you can use it on your skin. It's very good for dry skin. The other thing for dry skin and coming from a dry skin sufferer, an eczema sufferer, is I would look at your diet. I would also look at making sure you're getting all the essential fatty acids and oils and stuff in your diet because dry skin and skin issues are really a liver condition. So you really need to make sure that you're getting the right food and probably cut the dairy out, just saying. Okay. Go longer. This is fascinating. Great. Thank you so much. Kimberly. Uh, rubbed lavender on my feet last night. Had a great night's sleep and reduced my back pain. Yes, it is possible for lavender to reduce your back pain because lavender is actually the Swiss army knife of essential oils. It is good for a range of things. You get burnt in the sun, mix some lavender with some oil, slather it on your body. It will heal your sunburn. You get a cut, put some lavender on it. You got a sore back, put some lavender on it. You want to sleep, put some lavender on it. It could be like put a bird on it in Portland. I don't know if anybody's seen that, but put a bird on it, but put some lavender on it. Inflammation. Now, this is a very good question around inflammation. Um, what do I know about in inflammation? There's a few different oils that are very good for inflammation, and I do believe one of them is helichrysum, which is also good for skin. So um, who was asking about the dry skin? Sil Sylvia? Sil Sylvia? I hope I'm saying that right. Sylvia? Um, helichrysum, it's actually... Um, amazing for skin, but also good for um, joint issues, inflammation. What else was I using? I'm trying to remember. Um, frankincense overall is a phenomenal oil. There's a really particular reason why it was mentioned in the Bible a billion times because frankincense oil kicks some serious butt. Um, let me just see here. I'm going to just do a quick search because sometimes I draw a blank. I get a little nervous and I'm like, oh my God, they're asking me all these questions and now I need to know. Um, I will tell you right here doing a little quick search okay so um i don't agree with some of these but wintergreen so wintergreen is something i have used and wintergreen is very good for inflammation it has also that kind of cooling effect um it has frankincense here on this list uh let's see um it also mentions i don't know some of these i don't really agree with but they're on this list clary sage has anti-inflammatory compo components. I would stick with the wintergreen personally, if if you're wanting a recommendation. Wintergreen is relatively inexpensive and pretty much accessible everywhere. But just don't ingest it. Don't ingest wintergreen. No. 
Um, I would start with wintergreen and I would try frankincense. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I'm pretty sure Health Canada has approved frankincense for um, ingestion. And I take frankincense internally, not right now, but I've done it in bouts where I'll take it either in a veggie capsule or drop a couple drops in some juice and take it as a shot. But I also take uh, frankincense internally. Uh, inflammation. Okay. Wow. What do you, have, you know what you're talking about? Oh, wow, Robert. Thank you. That's quite a compliment. You do know what you're talking about. Kimberly. Okay. Wow. Okay, great. So um, now next week, I'm going to go over the five most important essential oils to have in your medicine cabinet. Five essential oils. One, two, three, four, five essential oils that you need in your medicine cabinet. If you have questions about essential oils, you can reach me. Shiloh Fiat on Facebook, Shiloh at happinesshabits.ca, or you can join my Facebook group, which is Happiness Habits by Shiloh. I've been using essential oils for about four years. I have a lot of experience with them, and I can share some more information with you about essential oils when you, when you, uh, when you get a hold of me. Sorry, somebody's trying to call me, and I'm panicking because it looks like, anyway. Um, so, yes. Please get a hold of me. And also for more expert articles and information, head on over to Exercises with Injuries. And this is great. It's been great to be here with you. If you love this live, if you'd like to see um, your friends um, enjoy some of this information, please share this video. And yeah, I'm so happy you joined us. Continue to ask questions. I will continue to answer them. Um, and I'll talk to you all again next week. Take good care. Bye for now.